For today's algorithm, we're going to be discussing the differences between bottom-up splay and top-down splay. But before we can get to that, we need to first recall what a splay tree is. So a splay tree is a self-balancing binary search tree with the additional property that recently accessed elements are quick to access again. This property is maintained by splaying after each operation. Now splaying is the operation of bringing the recently accessed node to the root of the tree. This of course naturally brings all nodes close to the recently accessed node close to the root of the tree. If you wanna learn more about the splay tree, you can click the title card in the right hand corner to view our video on splay trees. We're gonna assume that you saw that video. So this leads into our discussion about the differences between bottom-up splay and top-down splay. Now, bottom-up splay is the splay algorithm that begins at the node you wanna splay and works its way up. Now, there are two ways to go about doing this. The first one, and the most common one that you'll see if you attend a university, is using parent pointers. So for this situation, you're gonna use the parent pointers in order to traverse your way up the tree, rotating as you need to. On the other hand, the second way you can use a bottom-up splay is by starting at the root of the tree and computing which rotations you need to make as you make your way down the tree, and then making those rotations, starting at the node closest to the node you want to splay, backwards up the tree. This one requires the use of a stack. Generally, the, the use of the stack is preferred because it is simpler to implement and does not require your tree to have parent pointers. Either way, the claim we're going to make in this video is that both versions of the bottom-up splay are less efficient and require extra space than the top-down splay. Now, when we look at the top-down splay, how does it work? For top-down splay, we begin rotations at the root of the tree. This requires us to have a three-part structure in order to keep track of our tree as we progress along the rotations. Our three-part structure is gonna consist of a tree, if the center tree, which we will call M, this is going to allow us to traverse down the tree and make our way towards the target. The other two more important ones are L and R. L is the left header. This is where we append the left subtrees after each rotation. So L is gonna hold all the elements smaller than the node that we want to display. Now R, we call the right header. And as you can guess, it will, we will append the right subtrees to this header after each rotation. Therefore, since that's what we're doing, it will hold all the elements larger than the node we want to display to the root. After we're done splaying and our node is at the root of M, then we simply attach L to the left child of, it, of our root, R to the right child of our root, and then we attach the original right child of our root to the left child of R, and similarly, we attach the left child of our root to the right child of L. By splaying this way, we can actually combine the splay algorithm with the search algorithm, instead of having to do two passes. So, before we contrast the differences in, in how these splay algorithms really work, let's remind ourselves of the three splay cases. The first of which is the zig. The zig is when the, root, the node you want to splay is the child of the root. The second case is the zig zig. The zig zig occurs when the node you want to splay to the root is the grandchild of the root. But you can, tr you can get to that node by making two of the same direction no traverses. So either left, left, or right, right. The last case is the zig zag. Now this is the case where you are once again the grandchild of the root. However, you can only re reached by either going left, right, or right, left. So those are the three splaying cases. Now let's look at each one and compare them between bottom up splay and top down splay. Let's start with case one, the zig. So zig in bottom up. What we do for this is we notice that we want to splay 
a node that is the child of our root. So all we're going to do is either a left rotation or a right rotation. In this case on the left, since y is the left child of x, we just do one right rotation. This leaves us with a tree rooted at y with right child x. Next, let's take a look at zig for top down display. So zig for tops down display, how it's going to work is we're going to bring our target to the root of m, m being our center tree, and append its parent to its corresponding header. So for example, in the same case, we're going to bring y to the root of our tree, and then we're going to append x to the right header because x is larger than y. Now let's take a look at the zigzag case. Zigzag for bottom up, as you'll recall, requires us to do first do two rotations of the same direction, starting at the grandparent of the node that we want to display to the root. So in the case on the left, since we want to display z to the root, we have to make first a rotation at x that's going to bring y to the root of that subtree, and then a rotation at y, which is going to bring z to the root of the entire tree. That leaves us with z at the root, y is its right sub right child, and x is its right child. Next, we want to take a look at the zig zig case for top down display. Now for this case, we're going to bring our target to the root and then append its rotated grandparent, its rotated grandparent, to its corresponding header. So in the case of the left, we want to bring z to the root and then attach the subtree rooted at y with right, child's, with right child x to the right header. And lastly, the zigzag case. For bottom up, we first want to rotate at the parent of the node we want to split to the top and then rotate once again at its new parent. So in this situation, it's gonna leave us with a tree with z, with z as the root, x as its right child, and y as its left child. This brings us to the last, the sixth and final case, which is the zigzag for top down display. Now for zigzag and top down display, we need to bring our target to the root once again, but this time we're going to append its parent and grandparent to their corresponding headers. So in the case on the left, Z will be our new root. Y will get appended to the left header because it is smaller than Z and X will get appended to the right header because it is larger than Z. So all that's left to do now is show how in the resolution of display, these trees get recombined. So we'll just take a look at the zigzag case since we have it right here. To recombine this tree, we're going to take the root Z and attach the right subtree to its right child using the right header R. And for its left child, we're going to attach the left subtree rooted at the left header, and in this case, rooted at y with its corresponding subtree. Lastly, the right child of z is going to be appended to the left, left of x, and the left child of z is going to be appended to the right of y. So now that we've gone over the all the cases of both bottom up and top down display. Let's do a few examples of the top down display in action. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take our classic sharp CS tree that you're going to see in every video and display 20 to the root. Now clearly we're going to have to use a zig here in order to get 20 to the root. So 
as we know, what's going to happen is that 20 is going to be the root of our new tree M. The right header is going to now contain the original parent of 20, including its right subtree rooted at 60. And 20's children will remain the same as 10 and the subtree rooted at 35. Once we've appended to the appropriate header, we now have 20 at the root of the tree, M. So because of that, we can now reattach both the right and the left header to our tree and form our final product. What is that gonna end up with is a tree rooted at 20 with right child 50 brought by the right header. 50's right child and right subtree will remain the same, but its left child will now be the subtree that was the original right subtree of 20, our original root. So it's going to contain the subtree rooted at 30. And 20's left subtree is going to remain the same because there is no left header. Perfect. So now let's do another case. Let's splay 10 on the same exact tree. Now splaying 10, we're going to have to use a zig zig. So as we saw earlier, what we're going to have to do is bring 10 to the root of the tree, then append to our right header the rotated product of 50 and 20, meaning we'll get a tree rooted at 20 with right child 50, appropriate left child 30, and right subtree rooted at 60 and containing the same values. After we have this header, since we have 10 at the root of the tree M, we can now recombine L, M, and R to perform our final tree. So how is that gonna look? We'll have a tree rooted at 10 once again, with its right child being the right header. Now in this case, we don't have to worry about any previous children of 10 because 10 didn't have any children once we broke off the right subtree. The left header is once again empty, so the left child of 10 is going to be empty. Finally, let's take a look at the last case. We'll now splay 30 to the root of the tree. This is of course going to require zigzag. So to do zigzag, we're going to have to first bring 30 to the root of the tree, as always. But this time, we need to append to the left header the subtree rooted at 20. And now we have to append to the right header the subtree rooted at 50. 30's right child being remaining as 35. Now to recombine this tree, we need to take care of the fact that 30 has a right child 35. So what we're going to do is break off 35, attach the right header as the right child of our root 30, meaning 30's right child is going to be the subtree rooted at 50, and then attach 35 to the left of 50. Now for the left header, we just attach it as the left child of our root 30. And that's it we've now splayed in all three cases. So hope this was helpful. And if you wanna see a specific topic, you can please leave that in the comment section down below. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, share with all your friends, and we'll see you in the next video. See you.